What's up, 2K crew? Welcome to episode 73. And yes, you have found the Turbo and 2K show where we give you our amateur opinion on everything sports. So, as you can might as you probably see it for the folks on YouTube, yes, there's Turbo. No 2Ks. Uh, just to let you guys know, uh, 2Ks had some things come up this week, so you're getting me solo. So I'm not sure how long this episode's going to go, but I'm going to give you as much content as I can, as quick as I can. But still going to give you the same quality experience, ladies and gentlemen. And for speaking of the gentlemen, happy Father's Day to everyone out there. It is Sunday, and I'm, yeah, uh, uh, 2K's had some stuff playing with his dad and grandpa, so um, that's where he's at. So 2K's, happy Father's Day to you too, my friend. But yeah, let's let's jump into this week's episode. Well, actually, before we do that, let's uh, let's give a big shout out to our sponsor, Drop Anchor Tavern in Marcellus, Michigan. Uh, give them go on their Facebook page, check out their menu. They do have open dining hours as well as um, you can belly up to the bar for a drink as well. They haven't got draft beer yet, but but it's on the way. So for those of you that are looking for it, like myself who love draft beer, and we talked about that on a on a couple episodes ago. Uh, it is coming, it is coming, but they do have Kino and pull tabs all fired up for you folks, so go ahead and drop in, give them a call, do a, do a, they're, they're still doing curbside pickup as well, um, give them a call, 269-646-2525. And before we get any further into this, I did, speaking of Drop Anchor, I was up there last night and ran into Mr. Joe Mater, and for those that don't, those of you that don't know, Joe is the one that runs the Wildcat Open. Um, which is a golf outing that benefits the uh, athletic boosters of Marcellus. So I did get some information on that that I did want to pass along to the 2K crew. Uh, the 32nd annual Wildcat Open is going to be held at Pine View Golf Course on uh, Saturday, July 11th. And for those of you that don't know, the Wildcat Open is a two-person scramble. Anyone is eligible to, to enter. Um, let's see... The check-in will begin at 8 a.m. with a shotgun at 9 on the 11th. The cost to enter is $60 per person or $120 per team. For $60, you will get the following. Eight holes with a cart, a meal afterwards, two complimentary drinks, prizes, winners for best rounds in nine divisions, women's, men's, women's mixed doubles, 18 and under, both men's and women's, adult, youth, senior divisions, men, women's, and mixed doubles, also prizes for longest drive and closest to the pin. You can pick up your applications at uh, Drop Anchor, and let me see here, make sure I'm not forgetting anything. This is where we're limited to 144 total golfers, so sign up early to ensure a spot. For more information, call Joe Mater at 574-298-3614. Applications will be available at the high school office during office hours, as well as Drop Anchor. And yeah, it... it Pretty much, if you want to get into this thing, get a hold of Joe Mater, secure your spot, and you can pay on the day. So, Joe, I told you I would hook you up with that. So, there you are, my friend, and hopefully I will see each and every one of you out there because I'm going to try to make that one myself this year. So, with all that being said, let's jump into the meat and potatoes of this episode. Um, I, I kind of wanted to talk about, first of all, um, the Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa uh, documentary, which was last Sunday, the long gone summer. And just to kind of give you guys some preference, uh, this was, uh, the summer of 98. So this was, this would have been my senior year. Um, obviously towards, you know, the, the summer part would have, that'd have been my, the first summer of not having school. So I, I remember this vividly. I do remember the home run race, but some of the things that they did bring up, I, I didn't remember, which was kind of cool to take a walk down memory lane and, just kind of relive that, and I would have been 17 at the time, so a lot of the stuff I really didn't know was going on, but uh, there was a lot of stuff back then that, that I think we, that with everyone looking back at it, we really didn't know what was happening either, um, but we did, what we did see was, uh, well, for, we'll say three, we'll say three, three MLB players kind of basically taking major league baseball putting them putting major league baseball under their wing and flying with it and bringing back baseball because for the, if you rewind 4 years previous to that that's when the strike was and the and baseball lost a lot of fans because of the strike and to have this to happen 4 years afterwards regardless of the circumstance regardless of steroids regardless of PEDs 
it doesn't matter. These three guys, and I'm, I'm including Ken Griffey Jr. in that as well, um, basically brought baseball back to the back to the forefront. Everyone was watching it. Baseball people that weren't even baseball fans were watching it. They were cheering for it. They each had their favorite McGuire or Sosa, even though uh, Griffey kind of went went by the wayside uh, a little bit earlier than. I mean, I obviously didn't 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 contend for seventy or even sixty. But it, it I I included him because years leading up to that, and even in the, in the beginning of the year, he got off to a hellacious start and was just I mean it was bombs away from game one. So he, him and McGuire, McGuire kind of got things kicked off on the whole home run chase. And I remember leading up to that season, at least the couple before, there was always the, always the Maris watch. Who's going to, who's going to hit 50? Who's going to hit 60? And it was really, really fun to watch. And I mean, it, it captivated the nation, if not the world, uh, with this chase. And like I said, circumstances abound. I really don't, I really don't think that, uh, Yes, was the situation by Major League Baseball handled well? No, not at all. Not at all. But when you're selling tickets at, at, at the rate that they are um, and making so much money off of these guys, they could give they, they could have gave two shits what they were doing. I mean, McGuire could have come up with a second head coming out of his neck, and as long as he's hitting, as long as he's hitting bombs, Major League Baseball wouldn't care. And it only wasn't until later that uh, you know we we all know the. Uh, Standing up in Congress and um, Congress getting their heads, in, you know, poking their heads into Major League Baseball when there's a lot of folks that say they shouldn't even been there or that's not their place. But nonetheless, um, nonetheless, it, it happened and it basically, I mean, there, there, there was a lot of things thrown out there that um, obviously Sammy Sosa doesn't care about it. I mean, he, he even said on 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 the documentary i'm happy i don't care i don't care he's like I, I don't care if i ever make the hall of fame i really don't all i care about is right now i have you know my my family and my grandbabies and that's what i love so it, it's not affecting him any but to, to kind of go back to you know the the, the actual documentary there were the, you know i i, I kind of forgot how mcguire landed in st louis to begin with I remember one of the one of the very first players that I ever ever really loved watching was him and Jose Canseco and the Bash Brothers in Oakland. I think pretty much every kid my age was just captivated by both of those guys and just their power and everything associated with it, you know, with them that, you know, we every kid wanted to hit home runs like that. Every kid wanted to um you know, be be the be, be a bash brother. I remember doing the bash brother, you know, handshake with with my friends after little league baseball, and just going back and taking a step back in time, and even you know that's part of my baseball lineage is is right there, and I I, I had forgotten his injury plagued kind of last couple seasons with Oakland, and then all of a sudden, bam, he's you know he's smack dab in, in the middle of uh, St. Louis and. Even before that, how good he was as a home run hitter in college. Did not know that he wanted to be a pitcher going into college, which I thought was rather odd considering, you know, he's one of the most prolific home run hitters of all time. So I think he really did make, I think his coach really did make the uh, the best decision there for him. But it, it probably would have been neat to see him go on go on the other side too, just to see how good he, was, he would have been there. But that's neither here nor there. So... But yeah, I, I didn't know that. I it, it was a good refresher to kind of go back and you know take a look at like you know these are the guys that I grew up wanting to hit like wanting wanting to be like, and you know Canseco's lost his goddamn mind now. So it, at least McGuire is somewhat you know somewhat normal. He's back with baseball. Um, he's being hit, you know hitting coach here, hitting coach there, and doing. You know, he, he even said it in, in the documentary. He absolutely loves educating and coaching now, which is completely awesome. And but yeah, just just the whole premise of that home run chase and what it meant to baseball and what what it meant to the country. Because, like I said, there were people that weren't baseball fans that were following this. You could have asked anyone on the street at the time. All right, well, it's Monday night. What are you watching? Well, I'm, I'm watching at least Sports Center to watch to see if Sam, you know, Sam or Mark hit a home run. 
and that was the that was the whole summer i remember uh i remember actually where i was when i found out that mcguire you know hit 71 or uh excuse me hit hit uh hit uh, 62 and ironically enough that was one of the shortest ones that he hit so i remember exactly where i was i remember what i was doing and it was one of those things and you know in my lifetime that a yes because i i kind of idolized him growing up but just idolizing that whole uh home run just the whole home run chase that year was absolutely amazing so if you guys haven't watched it you know i was what's weird is that the Jordan documentary kind of got everyone all stoked. Everyone, everyone was, you know, it, it popularized these, these uh, documentaries, you know, 100%. However, the Jordan one was 10, you know, 10 weeks long in a week, in, in an hour every week. And then we saw the Lance Armstrong one, which was two, two, uh, two weeks. And then the Bruce Lee, and now this long gone summer. And the Bruce Lee one was actually really pretty cool too. I, I didn't know a lot about Bruce Lee, but it was very educational to see not only where he came from, where he ended up and his impact on not only the US, but the world. So that, that was pretty cool. And there were a lot of folks when it came to this long gone summer documentary that I agree with them. I wanted I wanted it to be longer. I have a feeling the, the director could have made this at least a five part series, which I think would have been extremely cool. Um, would, it, would it have been, you know, too much? Who knows? Who knows? But I think there's still a lot of questions that myself and a lot of other sports fans are just left scratching their head going, well, are we ever going to talk about this? Are we ever going to bring this up? And does anyone really care anymore? And I think there's two schools of thoughts here. Um, and once this was, once they announced that this, uh, that this long gone summer was going to be a documentary, 2Ks and I spoke on this. It's like, you know, I hope they take more time talking about the home run chase itself rather than trying to demonize these two individuals for PED use. And that's exactly what they did. They, they only spent the last like maybe 5% of the documentary. And it was, a, it was a, most of it was at the very tail end uh, talking about PEDs and about steroids. And we've known that Mark McGuire's came out and said that he admitted that he used it. And he admitted he admits it again in the in the documentary, saying that you know he used it you know primarily for um, for rehab and to shorten the length of injuries. And both of the both of the guys, Sosa and McGuire, you, if you if you look at their rookie your rookie card compared to their last card, oh my god! And he, I mean you can throw Barry Bonds in this mix. Um, obviously, Griffey. You know, as I mean, he, he came up as a very, very young kid, so of course he's going to be smaller. But as far as his actual like head size, feet size, that type of thing, I'm pretty sure they were pretty, pretty similar. And but one of the things that kind of uh, kind of got me thinking was the relationship between Sammy Sosa and the Chicago Cubs. And I look at I look I look back at it on this, and then even the years after the home run chase uh there, there wasn't a lot of love for sammy with with, with with cub fans and i look at it this way is that if they would have traded sammy at the height of his you know home run barrage they would have got a lot of value for him because back then even though in 98 the cubs did make the world not, not the world series but the postseason back yeah, that year um so Sammy's race was actually more compelling because he's his team was vying for a playoff spot, whereas the Cardinals were not that year. The Cardinals were an awful team, and the only thing they had going for him was McGuire. And I think if the Cubs would have moved him quicker, they could have got better prospects, and it probably could have led them to be become an even better team and might have won a World Series before 2016 if that would have happened. But that's neither here nor there. I mean, I, we really can't go back in time and test that theory, but that's just my theory. And, but just the, 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 I, you know, you, you could talk about the cork bat with Sammy, um, obviously the PEDs and stuff like that. And he's never been invited back to Wrigley in a decade. And to see what the, to how much money 
Cubs ownership made off him in that home run race is substantial. And for you not to even acknowledge his existence is kind of BS. I can understand you want to distance yourself from, or, or you, you could want to distance, distance yourself from players of the steroid era. I get that. But I think Cubs fans need to take a step back and look at, look at what that man provided as far as entertainment, money, money to spend on free agents. Um, revenue to do a whole bunch of other things while that while that chase was going on and he folks rewind he he hit 60 home runs I think three times three times I think he hit over 60 home runs whereas McGuire just did it once and just the whole if obviously Sammy's happy he, you know he he did say if you know if if the Cubs did invite him back he would uh he would think about going back, but I, I have a very good feeling that um, he had a, he had a very very big love for that city, a very big love for baseball, and just his overall personality. I think would be very cool to have him back, um, even if it's just for one game to throw out a ceremonial first pitch at, at Wrigley. I think I think the ownership does you know at least needs to give him a chance to do that, whether the fans want it or not. I mean, hell, 50 Cent throws out first pitches. Let Sammy throw a fucking first pitch. Come on. This, it, to, to me, it's, it, it's been long enough. And, you know, it. just like I said, he, he's provi he provided so much that year and even the years, a couple years after that, that um, just, just the monetary advantage that he gave to the Cubs and gave to the, shit, the, the, the city of Chicago. Let Sammy do something. I mean, come on. Am I the biggest Sammy Sosa fan? No, no. Um, when that when that race was going on, I was Team McGuire. Um, I was, uh, you know, obviously going, you know, you know, like I previously said, you know, I followed him from when he was with Oakland, you know, to St. Louis. So he was obviously my horse in that race. But it was very cool to, to kind of go back and see and just kind of relive that summer because it was it's it's a sports feat that. You know, we, we've since seen Barry Bonds, uh, you know, break that record. And kind of the same turmoil hangs over Barry Bonds' head. So uh, do I think that's a record that's going to be uh, broken or at least put a chase to it? Sure, sure, sure. I mean, you, you look at Pete Alonso hit 50 this year, and it was his rookie year, or last year, and that was his rookie year. Um, just wait till he really learns how to hit, and it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. And... I think nowadays, especially with the with the advancing and testing, that the the records will be a little bit more legit than than they were in the '90s or the late 2000s. So, I definitely think that there's people that can do it. I don't, you know, either. You do I expect it to happen? No. Would it shock me if someone uh, makes a run at it? At I'd be down with it. I'd watch every at bat, and I would love it. I would love it, and. Just because a, I'm not the biggest Barry Bonds fan. I never have, uh, and it has really has nothing to do with his, you know, the shadow lurking behind him with PEDs. It's just his overall personality. I think the man's a jerk, and just his, I'm, he just rubs me the wrong way. I'm, I'm not a big fan. And when I was growing up too, you you were kind of on the the Ken Griffey Jr. side or the Barry Bonds side, and I was definitely on the Junior side because that was my dude. I mean, that was I, I had Griffey posters like we talked about in a previous episode, so definitely that was my dude over over Barry Bonds. But <clears throat> so yeah, I, I've never really been a Bonds fan, and I would I would I would absolutely love for someone to make a make a run at that and take him off the top of that list. So at least the single season one. Who knows what the career one? That's probably out of reach for a lot a lot of people. So, but yeah, speaking of baseball. Let me take a drink here real quick. I apologize for the awkward pauses. I was trying to think how I could do this without 2Ks here, but we're going to make the best of it. Why? Because on the Turbo and 2K show, we rub dirt on it, we get back up, and we fucking finish it. That's what we do. So, speaking of baseball, you know, as, as we've seen in the news, the owners, the MLB uh, Players Association and the owners have been going back and forth with this stupid baseball season. Is it going to happen? Is it not? How many games? How, what's the pay? Ladies and gentlemen, I, I don't 
I don't, I'm sticking to my guns. I don't think it's going to happen. As much as it pains me to see it, I, I really don't see it happening. And I'm almost to the point where I would much rather see no games than 50 games. I know that sounds silly, but you're, you're taking a 163 game season, compressing it into 50, and then opening up more playoff spots. Would that be exciting for a lot of teams? Fuck yes. You know, we, we even talked about it. A young team like the White Sox could catch fire real quick right out of the gate and just run away with the whole thing, even though on paper the Yankees and the Dodgers are, are your teams to beat. But when Tom Glavin first, you know, when this first thing, when this whole negotiation thing started, he said, you watch out, this is going to be a lot like 2004 and there will be a strike. And a lot of us kind of sit back and like, Tom, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Well, Tom does know what the fuck he's talking about because look where we're at now. Look where we're at now. We are at, we're no closer to having a baseball season today, Father's Day, as we were three months ago, which is kind of saddening. It's kind of, you know, as a huge baseball fan, I want to watch baseball. I want, that's, that's what I look forward to every year, but I don't want a watered down product of it. And what leads me to believe that even if this does happen, if you're a team, if, if you're a dude on a team that sucks, what's to say there's a lot of dudes that have these, you know, surgeries, surgeries, quote unquote surgeries, <coughs> excuse me, just because they don't, they don't want to play. I could totally see that happening. I could totally see that happening. And would it be fun to, to see the, the, the dudes out there? Absolutely. Who doesn't want to watch Mike Trout lace him up and hit the cover off a fucking ball? I'm pretty sure every baseball fan would, even if they're not, you know, an, an, an Angels fan. Pretty much everyone in baseball loves Mike Trout, and he's very, I, I could see why. He's an awesome dude. And, then, you know, probably one of the best players of our generation, if not the best player. So, yes, I want, I, I want to see Trout lace him up. Yes, I want to see, you know, speaking of the Angels, um, you know, how's, how's Otani's, uh, how's his rehab going? Is, is he going to pitch? What is it going to look like? And, you know, even kind of coming back to the Tigers, how, how's Fulmer? How, how's his rehab going? Are, are we going to see him? If it's a shortened season, do you just shut him the fuck down and wait, wait till next year? Obviously, there's no uh, college season and there's no minor league season. So, what's the chances that they, you know, ownership just brings these young kids up and lets them play, lets them play 50 games in a, in, a, in a playoff? I think I would much rather more see that than the actual MLB dudes. I mean, and not to you know make fun of Tigers fans, but probably a better you know your your minor league system and your your a, a 50 game minor league season like that. Probably would be a little bit more entertaining to watch than than the big club anyway. I'm just just kidding, but you know, Tigers fans, you know, don't you know, tell I'm talking about. So I don't know. I'm 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 conflicted. I yes, I want to watch it. Yes, I want to see it. But at what cost? I I know we're not going to get the full 163. I know or 162. I know that. I know that. And I'm even at 80. 80 would be cool. And everyone's talking about how you know they they don't want to go into the you know deep into the fall to play. And because who knows if this uh, situation might rear its head again. I'm not going to say the actual word because on YouTube we get demonetized, even though we're not monetized. But just want to play by the rules here, folks. And everyone should know what the hell I'm talking about by now. But so baseball's got that going on. Uh, NBA is looking like they're going to be playing in a bubble in uh, the wide world of sports down in Disney. But even then, there there's some concerns with players that have tested positive, and you know there's not only players but coaches, staff, a lot of people have tested positive, and this you know that same world-renowned doctor is saying that the NFL should do the same thing, and where you even look at colleges, you look at Clemson, and there was a lot of a lot of people that tested positive in the Clemson organization. So what is that going to do for college football? There's just way too many unknowns still. And I have a feeling that, I mean, everyone was very, very cool with golf going back and, you know, them 
obviously it's easier to social distance when you're a golfer because you're not making contact with another person. And if you are, it's one, it's your, it's your caddy. So that I could see, but even they've come back with a positive test. So I think we all have to take a, take a step back and, you know, maybe it's not even good to have sports right now. As much as it pains me to say that talking on a sports talk podcast right now, Yes, I want content. Yes, it's easier to make content when there's stuff going on. But I like to think of myself as being a little bit creative, and we would get through it and uh, and give you some, give you all the content we can give you, and you know things like that. So I'm not really worried about that. It, I mean, come on, let's let's be realistic. If we're having all of these. Every, every sport that's trying to start back up is having t- having positive tests. At what point is it to be like, maybe this isn't a good idea? I don't know. I'm not sure. <clears throat> you know, even, <clears throat> excuse me, we, uh, and for those of you that, that are what, you know, that are partaking today, obviously today is the ESPYs. So even that's different. There's no one watching, the, you know, no one watching live. It's, it, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. But yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I, do, I don't mean to be the party pooper here. Um, I look at myself as, you know, kind of the, the leader of this podcast, of the show. And I'm always trying to be optimistic. I'm always trying to be funny. Always trying to bring you, bring you guys and gals stuff that you can relate to. And to kind of give you my insight on everything. Um, is my insight always right? Fuck no. Fuck no, you can look at our game picks that, that we've done. 2K usually kicks my ass in every part of that. So it's just one of those things where it makes me makes me think that maybe things aren't as far along as they should be to start sports. Especially sports like football, where you're constantly touching other players every snap. Basketball, you're Ding up on someone. Well, you're supposed to be. It is the NBA, so you never know. You're supposed to be Ding up on you know someone every trip down the court, and you're you're physically touching them. And why why should our athletes be subject to that? Now, if they voluntarily do it, that's fine. And there's a lot of a lot of the NBA said you know if you choose not to play this year, a you're not going to get paid, but you're not going to get fired. You're not going to get fined. Um, they just have to know by a you know a certain date that you're not going to be making the making the trip down to Disney with the team. So I'm praying that this these tests and, and you know they're these uh positive tests are um and a, a lot of them especially I, I saw this morning with the with the Clemson football team is a lot of the players that tested positive were symptom free. They were just carriers, but they had it. And of course they had to be quarantined and everything else and hell even Zeke Zeke Elliott for the Cowboys tested positive. So it's, and it, you know, two, two K's and I have, have both said it kind of at nauseum here. And it, it, if it's better for the players, let's just not have a season. If it's better for, I mean, obviously for baseball, the owners don't want to pay if there's no one in the stands. Which all their TV money aside, I'm not really sure how that how that works, and I'm I'm not a uh, definitely not a GM or anyone high up in a in a baseball organization. Otherwise, you probably would have heard my name, and I'd probably be a little bit more prominent than I am right now. But that's why I, that's why I get paid. I don't, I don't get paid to do this. I give you my opinions for free, and just kind of speculate because that's what that's what us. And I, I actually had someone call me media, so I, I guess I am in the media now, which is weird weird to think about, but that's neither here nor there. But it, it, it's, like we said before, there there is no rule manual. There is no how-to guide on this. So I understand everyone's, you know, kind of flying by the seat of their pants and doing everything that they hope is right and doing it the right way that they hope. So maybe, hopefully... These things can get worked out. The kinks can get worked out. We can get we can get sports back at least, you know, it, it, even if the NFL has to go in, into quote unquote the bubble to play. 
I understand the players not wanting to do that because they would be away from their families. They would be away from, they'd have to stay in the same hotel room for the length of the season. And obviously playing in a bubble, you wouldn't have, you know, you wouldn't have to travel for games. They'd all be in the same, same location. So I get it. I get it. The, the players don't want to do this. And, <clears throat> you know, even, even thinking about myself, um, I'm, I'm returning to my office, um, next Monday, I believe it's next Monday. And I would much rather, I'd much prefer stay home and work. And it has nothing to do with my coworkers. It has nothing to do with my office environment at all. I love the people I work with. I love my office. It's just that I've become so much more, much, much more comfortable working in my home environment that it's going to take some getting used to getting back to the office. So that's going to be weird. And then with all the, you know, we, we have to sign in, we have to take, you know, we have to have someone scan our forehead for, to get our temperature. Um, every time we leave the office, when I'm staying in my office, I don't, my personal, my personal office, um, I don't have to wear a mask, but when I get up and move around the actual office, I do have to wear one, which I don't like doing. I understand that it's for everyone's well being, but I, I don't like doing it. So I, I completely understand the players not wanting to be in this bubble, but at the end of the day, it's your job. You get paid to do your job. And like I said, the NBA is given an out to any player that doesn't want to participate. And for those that do choose to do it, kudos to you, brother, kudos. But I think at this point, all of them know that they're leaving. They're going to leave a lot of money on the table if they do do that. So who knows what they're going to do? I mean, there's baseball players that come out and said, you, you're paying me, you know, pay me my money. Because I'm putting myself, my health, my career on the line, playing under these conditions. So yes, pay me. And I don't blame them either. I don't blame them. I don't blame them. There's a lot more to life than just baseball. And there's a lot of people that'll tell you that. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. So yeah, let's... Uh, <clears throat> Let's step off the soapbox here, I guess. Um, I'm not really sure. I, that was kind of everything everything on the list that I had to talk about that I wanted to talk about. Um, I, I, I did get we did get some good reactions to last week at last week's episode about uh, sports cards. So I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad that our audience is kind of uh, you know re reacting to that because the more you react to something, the more we're going to get, the more we're going to do it because the more we know you like it. So. For those of you that reached out and commented and sent me messages and stuff, thank you very much. We will keep you updated with our uh, with our card collecting journeys, if you will. Um, I myself got into a uh, Topps 2020 Finest break um, on Leighton Sports Cards. Check them out, LeightonSportsCards.com, to see what the break and the schedule, how to get it, how to get into them. They have an excellent FAQ section. So if you're if you're really if there's something we haven't went went over on on the show um, definitely check out their FAQ section because they do answer a lot of questions and the videos that they have in there are really really good so check them out and I I, I bought the bought the Red Sox for $39 and got a couple re, uh, refractors some base cards um, didn't hit any autographs and so nothing major but do I think I got my money back probably pretty close Probably pretty close. Um, two Ks had a little bit better luck than I did. He did one over the weekend as well. And when he comes back next week, I'll let you. Fill, I'll let him fill you in on all of that because I, I don't want to burst his bubble. I don't want to burst his bubble. And we, you know, we did bring Jeff on last time to talk about his sports cards. I'm trying to convince another one of my buddies, Ben, to um, come on and talk because they're. Two different, you know. Obviously, we all we all love to, cl to collect baseball cards, but I think the four of us do it in different ways. And there's not, you know, and I'm not saying my way is better than any of them. It's just the way I choose to do it and the way I enjoy to do it. And Ben is more of the uh, uh, the old, like old school collector. Uh, you know, the um, '90s junk wax and earlier stuff. So, but he does dabble in in, in some of the new stuff too. So. Uh, the vintage vintage stuff that was the word I was looking for um, so yeah hopefully we'll, we'll get to have him on the show 
um, just, so, just so he can kind of share his expertise, um, tips and tricks that he has. And if you are on YouTube and want to look him up, his YouTube channel is B Fishing. And I think that's it. B Fishing 4 or something like that. Um, I will leave his, uh, his YouTube channel in the comments. So check that out. Check him out. Give him a shout out. Um, tell him Turbo sent you. And uh, folks, I think that's going to be it for this week. I apologize for the, uh, you know, we're only at 35 minutes, but I'm running out of things to talk about. And it's hotter than hell in the, in, in the studio because I have to turn the air conditioner off. So I, I again, I just want to say happy Father's Day to all you dudes out there. Um, Check out Drop Anchor Tavern, 269-646-2525. Look them up on Facebook. Get their hours. Drop in for a beer. Like I said, I, I, think, I, think, they, I think they said after next week they're going to be getting draft beer back in, which I'm super stoked about. And tell them Turbo and 2K sent you because they're, they're, they're a sponsor that supports us, and we want to support them. So get out there. Get your burger. They actually have this brand-new... Um, if you guys are familiar with the KFC bowls where they have the chicken tenders and shit in it, they have one of those. I had one last night. Absolutely amazing. Highly recommended. And I tell you what, when you get it in the bowl, it looks tiny, but the thing weighs like five fucking pounds. So I, put, I, I, I took it all out because it's got, you know, your mashed potatoes, your chicken, your gravy, your corn, and put it all on a, on a paper plate, and it filled the, filled the paper plate. So it was more, definitely more than enough, but... Yes, size the, the the size does play tricks on your mind because the damn thing weighs five pounds. So check them out. And again, if you either shoot me a message, leave me a comment if you need some more information about the Wildcat Open. Hopefully, here before too long, I will have information on the uh, Modder Golf Outing, which uh, we usually take a. Last year we did a two K crew uh, or a turbo excuse me, a Turbo and 2 case team out there last year, which we are planning on doing again this year. Always a fun, always a fun tournament. Um, probably one of the more lax and uh, just relaxed. People don't give a shit about scores. Just go out there, have fun, have a couple bevos, and hit the ball around, and hopefully don't crash any carts, which it's happened in the past. Shh. Shh. So... Keep your eyes and ears out for that because I will be posting and sharing information about that. Any other questions, guys, let me know. Um, check out our Twitter, our Instagram, um, all of our... Hey, we've got a pretty cool TikTok. So uh, our TikTok handle, handle is Turbo and 2Ks Podcast. So look us up there. Love to see you. Comment on the videos. Let us know that you love us because we love you back. And help 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 us get to that thousand follower mark so we can do live TikToks, which I think would be fucking sweet. So all all that being said, have a great week. Happy Father's Day to everybody. Stay stay cool. I guess that you know it's it's hotter. It was hotter than hell yesterday and today, but I get from what I heard the week is supposed to be cooler. So get out and enjoy it when you can. 2K Crew, I love you. Let me know if you have anything you want us to discuss on the show because. Yes, we are kind of running out of things to talk about. So help us out if you can. I would love it. And that way, too, we're making content that obviously you guys want to listen to and want to want to watch because you suggested it. So let us know about that, and we will see you next week. And, and Jim Rome, as always, we're coming for you.